For this tutorial, we're going to learn about direct variation functions. Now a direct variation function is a specific type of a linear function, and it's expressed in the form y equals kx. Now a way that you can interpret this is by saying that y varies directly with x, or in other words, the output will vary directly with the input. And for us, similar how with a linear function you have a slope attached to your x term, well with direct variation functions we have our constant of variation attached to it. Now if you wanted to find what this variation constant is, you could do a similar procedure as to finding a slope, except for direct variation functions you only need to know one point. So if you know an input and its corresponding output, you could find what your k value is. So you could just take your output, y, and divide it by x. Rather than doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you just need to do the one point, y over x. And that will help you find your variation constant. So now that we know a little bit of the basics with direct variation functions, let's see if we could identify some. So with these first two examples, they want us to determine if they're a direct variation function. So here with example one, we have a list of our input values and our output values. Now remember, with direct variation functions, it's y equals kx. Now for one particular function, k is going to stay constant the whole time. Now for us, since we have x and y values, we could find out what that k value should be if this really is a direct variation function. So let's do that by doing y divided by x. So here, with our first point, we could take 4 our y value and divided by the x value of 1. And that gives us a k value of 4. Well if this is really a direct variation function we should always get a k value of 4 when we divide our output and our input. So let's try it again for the second point. So we have our output of 8 and then our input of 2. And When we do 8 divided by 2 we also get 4. So it's looking pretty good right now. Let's just double check and take a look at the third point and make sure. So we have k equals our output of 12 divided by our input of 3. And that does also equal 4. So we know for sure that example 1 checks out. And we know that the k value specifically for this function is 4. Now let's take a look at example 2. Let's do that same test and see if it also has a constant k value. So let's start with the first point, 1, 6. So if this was a direct variation function, we would take the output and divide it by the input. And in this case we get 6 divided by 1, which is 6. So this should have a k value of 6 throughout the entire function. Now let's take a look at the second point. So if we want to find our k value, we would take the output of 3 and divide by the input of 2. Well 3 divided by 2 is not going to get us 6, so we know that these do not have the same k values. Now since this is the case, this would not be a direct variation function. So example 2 does not fit. Now let's take a look at another method of determining if a function is a direct variation function. So here with example 3 and 4, we have two equations. Now if they're going to be a direct variation function, they must follow the form of y equals kx. So we need to see which ones do that. So here with example 3, we have y equals negative 2x. 
Well, that follows this form, y equals kx. And then k specifically for this case would be negative 2. So example 3 checks out as a direct variation function. Now let's take a look at example 4. So here we have y equals 4 divided by x. Now for this case, we have x in the denominator. Well, with direct variation functions, x has to be in the numerator. So this does not work. So example 4 is not a direct variation function. Now let's take a look at just a couple more examples of identifying variation functions. So sometimes we not, may not have them written in a particular form that's easy to tell. So we first must need to isolate the y to see what we're really looking at. So first with example 5, let's isolate the y there. So with the y minus 2, we could isolate the y by getting rid of the negative 2 here. So we could add 2 to both sides. And that leaves us with y by itself equals 3x plus 2. Now again, for direct variation functions, it has to be y equals kx. Now with example 5, we have y equals 3x plus 2. Well, in a sense, it kind of has the kx, but it also has an additional constant. Now, because it has that additional constant at the end, it's not a direct variation function. So example 5 is not it. Now, for example 6, if we want to isolate the y, we could just add it to the other side. So we'll add y over here to cancel it out, and then add to the other side. So we're left with 1 half x equals y. Or we could say y equals 1 half x. Now for this example, we do have something in the form of y equals kx. And specifically for us, the k equals 1 half. So example 6 does check out. Now let's take a look at something a little different. So now let's look at some information and see if we could actually make a direct variation equation on our own. So let's take a look at example 7. So here it's telling us that k equals 7. Well, if we need to write it in direct variation form, we just need to plug this k value in for k. So if we're to write a direct variation equation, we would just say y equals k is 7 and then x. So that would be our direct variation equation for example 7. Now similarly we could be given an input and output instead. So with that we first need to find out what our k value is. And in order to do that we need to take our output and divide it by the input. So our output in this case is 3, and we'll divide it by our input of 6. Now 3 over 6 could be reduced to 1 half. So now we know what our k value is. So we can just plug it in to the direct variation form. So y equals k, which is 1 half, and then x. So for example 8, we would have an equation of y equals 1 half x. Now let's take a look at just two more examples. So now this time, we want to find a particular value. So we need to solve these equations now. So here with example 9, it says if x equals 9 when y equals 6, find y when x equals 3. So first of all, before we can even solve this, we need to first make the equation. So we'll use the first input and output that they gave us. So x equals 9 when y equals 6. So let's first find our k value. So we can do that by taking our output, which is 6, dividing it by our input, which is 9. Now this could reduce to be 2 thirds. So now we know that our direct variation equation 
is y equals 2 thirds x. But now they want us to find y when x specifically is 3. So we can just plug in 3 for our x value. So we have 2 thirds times x, which is 3. And now we just need to evaluate that. So when we do 2 thirds times 3, we get a y value of 2. So y will equal 2, for example, 9. Now let's take a look at example 10. So for this one, if x equals 16 when y equals 10, use proportions to find x when y is 5. So for us, we're still going to solve it, but we're going to be doing it a slightly different way. Now, again, we still want to know what our k value is. So k is by taking our y divided by x. Now in this case, they give us a y value of 10 and an x value of 16. Now what we do with proportions is we still have this other point that we're looking at. And for this particular point, we know the y value but not the x value. Now, since it's the same function, the k value should stay constant no matter what. So we have a y value of 5, but we don't know our x value. Well, if the k should be constant and never change, then that means this 10 over 16 should equal the 5 over x. So now we have a proportion equation set up, and the only variable to solve for is our x. So now we just need to do cross multiplication to solve for x. So we'll do x times 10, which is 10x, and then 16 times 5, which is 80. And now to solve for x, we just need to divide 10 to both sides. So that gives us an x value of 80 divided by 10, which is 8. And that about wraps up the tutorial.